it's Dorothy Guining with Scrapbooking Quebec, and today I'm here for Stretch the Sketch. And like the intro suggests, I'm going to be taking this 12 by 12 sketch by Brenda Ragsdale and turning it into this, a double page layout. Now be sure to check out what the other crafty YouTubers are doing with this sketch, and I'm going to put links to all of their channels in the information box below. This is what I'm going to be using. There are products from the Tropical Oasis Suite from Stampin' Up. It's actually my stash kit for March. And I did some preparation in advance. So I already prepared this frame style foundation across two pages with six papers and I gutted four of them. And as you can see, even though the pages join in the middle, I still just gutted the middles of the papers. And that's because it's much easier to adhere these layers together when the full square is still intact. Otherwise, the papers are too floppy and it's hard to adhere them straight. As you can see, I backed my photos in advance and I used the cardstock that I gutted from behind the foundation page. And now I'm having a look at this sketch. Now I'm gonna be turning it on its side. I find that chevron border a perfect way to stretch this sketch. Basically, I'm gonna take the foundation pieces of this sketch and those are the papers that are adhered on top of the 12 by 12 canvas and I'm gonna stretch it across two pages. So basically, the middle grouping is gonna be divided between these two pages as opposed to in the middle of one page. So now I'm going to continue preparing my foundation page. So I cut down this 12 by 12 paper at 7 inches, then cut it in two. And I'm going to put measurements for all of this on the screen. And now what I'm going to do is create my chevrons with a square die. So that's a 3 inch strip of paper. I'm drawing a line in pencil down the middle at 1 and a half inches. And that line is going to serve as a guide to where I will place my die. So basically, I place the die on the paper with the point landed right on that pencil drawn line. And the bottom of the paper is basically lined up just where it touches the inside of that square die. And that basically serves as my guide for measurement. Once I cut one chevron, I keep doing it the same thing over and over again. And you'll see in a minute, I turn off my video and turn it back on. I have a pile of chevrons that are all the same size. Now what I'm going to do is place these foundation parts on my page, more or less according to the sketch. I put three chevrons on one side and two on another, but I end up changing that around a little bit later. And I'm going to take my photos and place them on the page. Now, obviously, I have more photos. I have two pages, but my photos are horizontal and not vertical as I'm using the sketch. However, I'm going to talk a little bit about photos and my philosophy behind the shapes of the photos later on. So as you can see, I moved my chevron over. And on the sketch, there's a banner on the left-hand side. So that's what I'm going to create right now. So I cut that down at one and a half inches. And I have a triple banner punch by Stampin' Up. So I'm going to snip a fishtail in the bottom of that. However, if you do not have a triple banner punch, you can just snip it with scissors. Very, very easy. So now I'm going to adhere all of these parts to the page. So I'm going to talk a bit about photos here, simply because, like I said, obviously I have more photos, but the orientation is different. However, I find that when the foundation pieces of a layout are properly and well placed, I can almost place my photos anywhere. So here the foundation pieces would be that square in the middle, that chevron border that goes across two pages, and I guess the frame foundation. Once that's in place, as long as I adhere to certain basic design principles, I find the layout more or less comes together well. Now in this case, for placement of photos, I would make sure there is not much trapped white space. And that's the empty space between photos. On the parameter of the layout, it's okay. Around the edges, no big deal. But when the trapped space is in between photos, then it often causes a problem. And I have two spots there in between the two pages where they join. 
that there is trapped space and I will end up having a bit of problem with that later on. Anyway, I'll talk about that later on. As you can see, I cut out my title in advance. I use two different dies and I will list them in the information box below. But that word cocoa, which is misspelled by the way, I have to drop the A later on. The top letters, there are two letters there in green and in yellow. They're one layered on top of the other. The top layer is embossed and I'm just showing you how I did that. Basically, I embossed the cardstock first, then I cut out the letter with my die. And the reason why I'm including that process is because I find that when I emboss first and cut second, the letter turns out neater. It obviously works out the other way as well, but for me, I find it just has a nicer cut. Now I'm going to move on to my embellishments. Now I'm going to be creating my own embellishments with this Tropical Oasis Suite from Stampin' Up. So I'm stamping out some leaves now. The cardstock is Pear Pizzazz and the ink is Old Olive. So basically it's two different color colors, but they're close enough. So it gives me kind of a tone on tone look here. And I'll cut those out in a minute. But first I'm going to cut out my pineapples. Now even though this is in my stash kit for the month of March, this is a new product and I absolutely love it. So I'm going to cut out this pineapple and I don't know if you're going to really see the true beauty of it on the screen, but there are like little pieces that stick out. It's a little bit embossed. It's really, really a beautiful pineapple, I guess. <laughs> anyway, um, and then I'm going to cut out the leaf and then I turn off the camera and you'll see magically I'll have a pile of decorations beside me. So I end up cutting out five different leaves, I think, as well as three pineapples. So there you go. I cleaned off my desk. And what I did actually off camera is I added sequins to those pineapples. I loved the effect, but it was a pain in the butt to do it. I had sequins all over my room. So I placed my title, that is on wax paper. The A is still there and it shouldn't be there. And I'm looking at the sketch and I'm placing my embellishment clusters. It should be kind of in the left by the title, on the right towards the bottom and the top right. But I'm now at this point realizing I have this trapped white space on the left hand page and on the right page. So I'm more focused about filling in that trapped space. And the reason why I said earlier it's good to avoid that, it's because often when you have that, people have a tendency to want to fill it in with embellishments. And it's almost like embellishing for the sake of embellishing as opposed to purposefully embellishing a page. Anyway, I think I succeed, but it's something that is worth avoiding. I also mentioned earlier that when the foundation pieces, those papers adhered to the 12 by 12, or in this case, 24 by 12 page, um, if you adhere to certain design principles, you can basically make the page work. So obviously, like I said, avoiding trapped white space. But another thing is kind of like your visual triangles when you're embellishing a page. Um, another thing would be repetition with size, image, and color. Anyway, enough about that. As you can see, I am adding some journaling lines. I'm using a stencil by Echo Park called Back to School. I'm holding it in place with washi tape, but I'm also masking the areas that I don't want to ink. And I'm using early espresso ink from Stampin' Up! And I just used a sponge brayer. There's Chester. He woke up from his nap, so he's running around my desk right now. Now I'm adhering all the page parts. So I'm adhering my title. The A is still there, but it does get dropped a bit later on. And I'm now kind of adding a cascading layer of leaves that goes across those two pages, again, trying to fill in that trapped white space. So I'm having another look at my sketch and in the top right hand corner, there's this triangle there. Um, I don't add a triangle. What I'm going to add here are three banners, kind of a little cluster of banners. And the reason why I'm doing that is I feel I've got a lot of shapes happening here. I've got that chevron 
banner happening across the two pages. I have a banner already on the page. I have those giant pineapples everywhere. So I didn't want to introduce another shape to the page, so I decided to repeat those banners. Now I'm making two sets of three. I know I'm going to put one in the top right hand corner and kind of replace that triangle that's up in that corner. And I'm half thinking of putting one on the left hand side as well. I'm feeling that there's a lot of white space up there and I might want to fill it in. And I was cutting banners anyway, so I thought, what the heck, I'll cut myself a second set just in case. And I do that often. I end up not using it, by the way. So I adhere all three of these together and then I place them. It's still not adhering at this point. And what I'm going to do now is get out these stickers. Now, in this kit, there was a kind of a project lifestyle card kit that came with stickers as well. So on that sheet of stickers, well actually there are four sheets of stickers, there were these labels. So I cut them in half and it kind of made tabs. And if you looked at the sketch, there are these tabs in those areas. So that's what I used for that. And now what you see me doing is using a die by Stampin' Up. It's called Stitched Frames or something like that. And it's a just a line of embossed stitching. So I'm adding that along the top edge of those banners. And then I still go into my stickers and you'll see me get out this, um, well I'm adhering this first, but I will get out this circle sticker that I end up adhering to the top right. And then I add another sticker on top of that. But that circle sticker, I end up punching out a circle of cardstock and I'm putting it behind it simply because I want to add some foam adhesive. So there I go, adding another sticker. I'm almost done here. Basically, all I really have left to do is my journaling, which I do off camera. And you'll see the journaling ends up almost like a border on the right-hand side of the page. So I actually quite like the look. I end up adding another tab to the top of this layout, just kind of to add a visual triangle. So I'm having a look at the page. I'm really happy with this. So this was a really fun sketch to stretch. Honestly, all I did was take the foundation pieces, the paper, and stretch them across two page. Then what I did was I simply adhered to certain design principles. I tried to avoid white space, but that didn't work. And then I kind of incorporated it all together with repetition as well as visual triangles. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to Scrapbooking Quebec if you haven't already. I'd be thrilled if you did. Also, be sure to check out the other crafty YouTubers who are participating in this YouTube hop. I put all their links in the information box below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.